Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the reasons why Aaron did the rumbling. Specifically, we're going to be seeing if he did the rumbling to make his friends live long, happy lives. That's what this video started as, but as I started like doing my research, going back in the manga and whatnot, it became bigger. It became why did Aaron do the rumbling? So depending on the title, that's how it's gonna go. Let's get started. Let's not waste any time. So the reason Attack on Titan as a fandom is pretty split is because there are half of us who believe that the ending was not only rushed, but it was also filled with ass pulls and shit that should not have been in the series at all. Like, Aaron's character was pretty much retconned and demolished by the way that the story ended. And as Isayama said in interviews, the ending was changed. He goes back and forth. He flip flops back and forth. So I'm of the belief that the ending is bad, that it was changed, and that he demolished Aaron's character to create a ending that the majority of people would be able to sit with and would be able to like because their favorite characters survived right? That's my belief. And the things he said in interviews that corroborate what I'm saying is he said that as the story got more and more popular, he decided that uh, the original ending wouldn't be fair to the audience who fell in love with the characters, right? Another thing he said was that uh, he was inspired by Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, while writing the end of his story, while changing it, in my opinion. And so that's why we get this kind of kumbaya, saviors of the world type of ending. Where originally, he said this again, he said this in an interview, this was one of the first things he said, that the story ends like the mist. That's what he said. What happens in the mist? Everybody that you care about dies, except one sole survivor, the main character. And they don't just die, the main character kills them all. Because the future he assumed was so bleak that, you know, they wouldn't survive it anyway. He killed them as a pity for them. So what we got was a lot different than that, obviously. So what we're going to be doing in this video is deciphering, I guess, sorting the topics on this list, the 10 reasons that the story introduces why Aaron did the rumbling. We're going to be sorting between which of these have uh, merit woven deep into the fabric of the story and which are ending ass pulls pretty much okay let's get started with topic number one Aaron did the rumbling to eliminate the threat to Paradis. This one is true. As we see early on in the series, Aaron has a very protective nature. He says out of his own mouth, like, if you threaten to take my freedom, I won't hesitate to take yours. And anybody who, like, takes freedom from other people, he dehumanizes them. You are an animal. Like, I don't care about your life. If you take life from other people, I don't care about your life. Your life has no value. That's the way he thinks. And that's the way he thinks in the uh, entire story up until he reunites with Reiner, right? He understands that some people are just brainwashed, right? Like some people, he, he tells Reiner, like, you know, what chance did you have against, you know, self-hatred propaganda? I understand you're not evil. I get it. I do. But at this point, I'm moving forward to protect my people because we were born into this world. We have a right to live. So we see Aaron go from this like extremely, you know, you do it to me, I do it to you type of person, like without any second thought, without any nuance. And we see in season four and in the later chapters of the manga, we see, well, I'll just talk about it in terms of the anime since it's easier. We see in season four that he becomes more nuanced. Yeah, I understand, like, not everybody's bad, right? He cries to Ramsey. He, he, he gets it. Not everybody deserves this. There's Falcos in the world, right? He gets it. However, he has to move forward and eliminate the threats because he deserves to live, because he was born into this world. Just the fact that he was born into the world gives him the right to live and to not be killed. Like It's like, a no, it's a no-brainer and it's like universal. That's how he feels about everybody, right? Like if someone threatens your freedom, fuck them, kill them. 
right? Being a slave to freedom is an oxymoron, right? Like it doesn't exist to be a slave to freedom. Someone who's a slave to freedom is the most free person of all, right? And so Aaron being a a quote slave to freedom as he confirms in the last (laughs) in his last words to Armin. Yeah, it makes sense that uh, these people who are threatening to kill him, to wipe him and his people off of the map, he's going forth to eliminate these threats. The rumbling is this measure to kill the people before they can kill Paradisians, right? Remember, the World Alliance has grouped up and they are ready to wipe Paradis off the map. So eliminating threats is approved. It is in line with his character. It is not a ending or 139 ass pull. Next up, Aaron did the rumbling to see a world like Armin's book. A barren, waste, Iceland, vast ocean, blah, 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 no types of people. This, I don't understand how this was ever a theory. Well, I get it with the one third. I'm going to spoil it. This is obviously a 139 ass pull. Aaron did not give a fuck about seeing a barren fucking wasteland. When he says he's disappointed, uh, like at Marley, and he's like, venting to Ramsey who can't understand him and he was like when I learned that people lived outside the walls I was disappointed he is not saying he was disappointed that there were people therefore I'm gonna do the rumbling so there's no more people he's saying he was disappointed that he couldn't like it wasn't freedom out here it was just more enemies and he like fucking says that uh at the end of season three he's like hey if we kill everyone over there will we finally be free That's what he meant by, when I learned that humanity lived outside the walls, I was so disappointed. And Isayama corroborates this in an interview where he says, yeah, he was disappointed because he read the three books and there was just more enemies across the the ocean. There was not this big freedom. There was not opportunities to just be, to just explore and be out there. There was another war waiting for them, period. So let's chop that now. I do not want to hear anything about Aaron like wanting to see a barren wasteland. That doesn't even make sense for his character at any point. But uh, you can attribute that to him being unstable, which is the last point we're going to touch on in this video. But no, this is a 139 ass pull. Isayama says himself that he was disappointed (laughs) because... um, people you know there was another war waiting for them that's what those people represented another war racism hatred Aaron says that when Armin showed him the book it just showed him how unfree he truly was right like he was denied being able to see these sites because of the people who lived outside of the walls right it has nothing to do with hey there's other life forms out there no I want to see it like the picture book I want to see a vast landscape and no people at all like no it's when armin showed aaron the book like the light in his eyes all of that stuff it reminded him that hey we are innocent people who deserve to see these things because we were born and it's been denied to us just because of our race their dreams with this book were never the same right armin saw the book as this great like oh my God, look at all that's out there. Like, uh, uh, imagine seeing these things for yourself. And Aaron saw the book as, oh my God, all of this stuff is out here and we've been denied seeing this, right? So they both had the desire to see those things, right? But for Armin, it represented like, I guess, hope and wonder and curiosity For Aaron, it represented, like, lack. Like, we don't have access to these things. And it it made him upset, made him angry. The book inspired Armin. The book made Aaron angry. So, no, despite the 139 or last episode ass pull, Aaron did not do the rumbling to see a barren wasteland with no people in it. So this one's a bit harder, right? Did Aaron do the rumbling to end the Titan curse? 
I'm going to say no, he did not do the rumbling to end the Titan curse. Aaron was not necessarily disturbed by Titans at this point. He called the people who were turned into Titans from uh, Eldia, from Marley, right? He called them Patriots, fellow Patriots. He realized that Titans were not the problem. The people who were turning people into Titans were the actual problem. Now, sure, he didn't really enjoy the fact that they shortened the lifespan of people. And sure, he was against passing Titans down, you know, a bloodline, right? However, he had no beef with Titans past figuring out that Titans were actually humans, that figuring out that Titans were actually uh, Eldians from the mainland who uh, were fighting against oppression, the oppression and the oppressive regime over in Marley and in the rest of the world. So for me, this one isn't something, I, a hill I would die on, but I'm personally going to say that, yeah, no, sorry, Aaron was not doing the rumbling to end the Titan curse, despite him saying in the one, in 139 that he chose the path that would lead to Mikasa making a choice that would lead to the end of the Titan curse. Despite him saying that, I do think I'm going to chalk that up to another 139 ass pull. This one is debatable though. Like I, I will accept uh, counter arguments to this argument I'm making. So now we get to the topic that this video was originally just going to be about. Did Aaron do the rumbling so his friends could live long, happy lives? No, no, no. Absolutely fucking not. I'm so sorry. Absolutely not. He doesn't even say at the ending that, like, I want you all to live long, happy lives. I did this so you could all live long, happy lives. He knows. Any fucking body knows that any existence that the survivors of this atrocity any existence that they have is going to be miserable one of misery one of misery i personally won't say that this is like um you know that it's not true that aaron would like for his friends to live long happy lives but his goal became so much bigger than that his goals of freeing his people became so much bigger than a handful of friends right think about it he killed his mom he killed his dad you mean to tell me that armin and mikasa and john and connie are more important to aaron than his mom and dad absolutely not i'm so sorry you cannot argue that with me i don't care his mom no i do not care that there there's no contest his mom being killed by him is also a fucking shock value ass pull but we're not that's not what this video is about he, if he wanted his friends to live long, happy lives, he would have did the rumbling 100% and erased their memories. That's what he would have done. And then it would have been beautifully ironic because the person who, you know, who fights for freedom, who, you know, was against all of these terrible regimes, does something that the previous king did to the people erasing memories and so on and so forth right now with the way the series ends we have him doing much worse than the original like king of paradise much much worse <laughs> right like absolutely awful not getting the kids out of the forest which was one of the biggest themes of attack on titan passing down the burdens to uh future generations at, it, it, like it come on now like the ending is so bad it makes no sense with what we were shown his friends had no absolutely no chance of living long or happily with how the, with the state that he left the world in by the end of like the chapter at the by the end of 139 and by the end of the uh, final episode the last series there was no happiness to be found and like he said in the last chapter itself he didn't even know if his friends would survive right he did not know if his friends would survive the jaegerist uprising nor did he know if they would survive the rumbling and, and look at how many people were lost along the way right sasha hands down one of aaron's friends dead 
Levi almost died up against Zeke, and he almost died during the rumbling. Like, Angie fucking got burned to a crisp. She got cooked, right? So there is no planet that he was doing the rumbling for his friends to live long, happy lives, nor to be superheroes, but we're gonna get there. I tried to put these all in orders of, like, where the themes show up in the story. I tried to put them in order of, like, where they're introduced, right? Like, the theme of, like, wanting the friends to live long, happy lives was kind of shown to us in, like, uh, I believe season three. No, it was season four. But it was towards the beginning, right? When they're working on the railroads, they were introduced to uh, Hizuru, and they're building, like, railroads and stuff, and they're talking about inheriting Aaron's Titan. He's like, nah, none of you guys are gonna get it because I want you all to live long, happy lives. I want, right? It wasn't his goal. It was just something he wanted. As I'm editing, sitting here, listening to my voice, I'm beginning to think that now Isayama like kind of used this. Like at first, I want you all to live long, happy lives was gonna be something that was beautifully ironic, right? Like more of the 104th was supposed to die in the rumbling. And so, you know, the rewatch value of that moment in the wagon where Aaron says, I wish I want you all to live long, happy lives, you'd see that and you'd be sad and you'd cry. Or at the end when they all would die, or John and Connie at least, when they get turned into Titans, they should have died there. You'd, you'd look back to that moment, you'd think back to that moment and be like, damn, that's really sad. So now it amounts to nothing. And it's like, well, like, uh, instead of it being this super ironic, good moment to go back on now that's his su surprise surprise that that was his big goal all along even though he didn't even know if they would survive i wouldn't say that this was a 139 ass pull as much as it was like a crutch that isayama leaned on to try and make the ending that would make most people happy their favorite characters being alive and well at the end right this is the crutch that isayama was probably so happy he had in the story because he pretty much kind of formulated the ending off of this one scene, right? And completely ignored all the other scenes that uh, obviously clearly expressed Aaron's goals in doing the rumbling. So next on our list, Aaron did the rumbling to protect Historia. Now, a lot of people accuse me of being an EH shipper. I am not a shipper. I just think with the story we got, it makes the most sense. If we're to assume that everything put in the story is put in the story for a reason, which is how writing works, right? You don't introduce, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't pay a lot of attention to the match on the side of the counter, unless at some point in the story, somebody's going to start a fire with that match, right? That's just how writing works. Why are we paying attention to this match on the counter? Unless at the end of the story, there's payoff for it. And so we have so many scenes of Aaron saying, I will not sacrifice Historia. I'm so sorry, not gonna happen. Uh, Historia wants to become a Titan, right? And we have the wine plan in place to make sure that that doesn't happen, that the government can't force her to do that. Yet she decides to have a baby for some reason. Doesn't make sense. But Aaron does everything he can to keep Historia off of the front lines, right, of the battle. So much so that Hanji picks up on it twice. She's like, hey, like, I've been noticing, like, I knew you'd never sacrifice Historia. What about Historia? Like, she teases him about this because at this point, it's like there's clearly something you're protecting here. And that's the only leverage Hanji tries to use against Aaron when he's in jail, right? It's the only leverage. What about Historia? He doesn't, Hanji doesn't say, what about Mikasa? Hanji doesn't say, what about Armin? She says, what about Historia? Because she's been noticing. So back to the example with the match. Why are we writing in Hanji doing a double take at Aaron, interacting with Historia? Hanji uh, emoting after Aaron stands up for Historia. What is this all for if it makes no sense in the end? And Historia is the only one Aaron comes to about his plan. He's like, hey, so I'm going to do this rumbling. She's like, yo, I don't really know if I agree with that. That's fucked up. That's what happened to your mom. And he's like, yeah, well, we don't really see what he says to her to convince her. Besides him saying that, you know, and he has no reason to lie to her, right? 
Because if she was going to stop him, if she wanted to stop him, she's a fucking queen. She would have. He told her just because he trusts her. So this is this like is like one of the final times we get a look into Aaron's actual thoughts before, you know, chapter 139 that I called the ass pull chapter or the final ap- ep- final episode, which is the ass pull episode, right? These are his final thoughts that we get before he spends the f- like final arc sleep, right? These are his final thoughts. The final peak into his like motivation, into his uh, inner thoughts, inner turmoil. And it's him telling his story of things that like are corroborated by the series so far. Hey, I, I need to bury this cycle of hatred. Um, they want to continue making child eat their parents, like passing Titans down a bloodline. I won't let them. That's done. That's over with. And he tells the story of we either run or we fight. He do, he, okay, let's be so for real. He does not mean Historia run away by yourself. He does not mean Historia fight by yourself, right? He means I'm here with you because he literally is right there with her. We run or we fight. She says, we're not doing either. Like I'm staying right here. And then there's a time skip, obscured conversation. And she asks what he would think about her having a child. And there's never any follow-up on that. I'm not, this isn't the video to speculate on that, but I think we can say that with the way that the Uprising arc is written, where Historia stands up for Aaron and saves him that day, okay, does not eat him, fights for his life, okay, calls him her ally, right? Well, calls herself his ally. She protects him and he pays it forward and he protects her. It's even in like subtly in this conversation that he has with Falco, right? Falco sits next to him under a tree, right? And he's like, hey, like Falco's telling him, yeah, there's this girl that I don't want to become a Titan. Well, there's this person that I don't want to become a Titan. And Aaron's like, is it a girl? So he gets it, right? Like it's it's expertly woven into the story so Falco's like I'm doing what I'm doing to protect Gabby I'm doing what I'm doing to protect her for from becoming a titan that's why I do everything and Aaron is inadvertently admitting that he's doing the same for someone he's relating to him so this one is going to be a yes I do believe there's enough in the story to show that you know enough before the final arc to show that yeah Aaron did do the rumbling to protect Historia specifically now I also believe that he did the rumbling to protect the people of Paradis he brings every Eldian down into paths and he tells them hey like this is Aaron speaking listen up I'm coming everyone's going to fucking die so I can protect my people he has no reason to lie at this point. He has no, uh, he gains nothing by lying at all. In fact, if his actual plan was to make his friends super duper heroes and come stop him and stuff, he would not have given them the perfect reason not to try and come stop him. He says, hey, without this rumbling, the people of the rest of the world would come and kill us all. Now, we even see John almost doesn't even try and stop the rumbling. We see that. He's the only, honestly, John's the only, like, one who's kind of making sense. He's the only character who wasn't absolutely ruined at the ending. He's like, hey, I fought hard and I earned a life where I could sit back. Even Flock, right, is saying, like, you all, Flock was so for his people, guys. And Maturing is realizing that Flock was an asswipe, but he wasn't wrong, right? That is Maturing. Because Flock said, you all have fought enough fighting our own people, Titans, right? That are Eldians that were turned by Marley. You all have fought enough. Just sit, sit down. Let Aaron take care of the rest. So if the plan was to get these people... To come and kill Aaron. If that was the plan all along. Why the fuck are Aaron. You know his conspirators. And himself giving 
the Alliance the perfect excuse to not come and get him, not come and kill him. Wouldn't it have made more sense if he let them know, you know, and I'm saying let him know based on chapter 139, based on the last episode, the ass pulls, that he's unstable, that his head is all messed up. Wouldn't that be a better thing to say when he brings everyone into paths? I'm losing my absolute fucking mind and I'm going to go on a rampage and kill you all. Then John would have jumped up. I'm stopping this shit. He's out of his mind. Other characters would have jumped up. He's absolutely out of his mind. Let me stop him. Instead, he gives them the perfect reason to not come and kill him. So there, I'm sorry, there is no way he's lying in this scene. Hear me, people of Paradis. This is Aaron Yeager. I've come to liberate you, okay? Absolute perfect reason not to come and stop him. So yes, I do believe that, again, this is actually one of his reasons to do the rumbling to protect the people of paradise and to not leave their future up to fate as he stated so next we have bury the history of hatred and the cycle of hatred right like this is clearly a yes (laughs) like we don't even have to talk about this that long because he said this to paradise he said this to the eldians when he brought them all into paths We established he has no reason to lie and every, I mean, he has a reason to lie and that would be to, uh, well, not lie, I guess, based on the ending, but he should tell the truth, the quote, quote, truth based on 139, that his head is all messed up and mixed up and blah, blah, blah. He doesn't know what he's doing or thinking or saying so they can come kill him. Right. But instead he tells them the fucking truth. (laughs) He tells them something that would make them not want to come kill him. Which makes no sense if the ending made sense, right? So in Paths, he tells them, hey, like, I'm doing this to end the cycle of hatred. I'm doing this to end the, you know, to bury the history of hatred. And he tells this to Historia too, which again, we establish he has no reason to fucking lie to her. (laughs) Uh, He has every reason to tell her, like, hey, I'm batshit crazy, like da 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 But he does not. He tells her the truth. So yeah, we're going to say that this makes sense because we even see that when he reads the books you know it's he's disgusted right even as Isayama said in interviews he read the books he was disappointed that the people outside of the world were so racist and awful he goes to the Marley convention where they talk about you know peace negotiations with Paradis and uh the land Eldians are like oh no fuck Paradis like they're the bad ones leave us alone we didn't do shit like you know, we're just products of them breeding with other people and blah, 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 blah. We don't deserve this. It's them, right? So Aaron's like, nah, fuck this shit. Like, let's bury this. Let's bury this shit. The only cure for this is to bury the seeds that bore it completely in the ground. He says that multiple times. And it's very in line with his character because that is how he eliminates threats. Uh, They first do something to him. He then dehumanizes them and then wants them dead because how dare you come for my for my freedom, right? But then, you know, we did discuss how he has kind of grown out of the dehumanizing stage and he's just like, well, it is what it is. It's me against you. And I'm gonna choose me every single time. Okay. Because I was born into this world, period. We're going fast now because I do have somewhere to be. <laughs> so, um, he did the, ru- Aaron, Aaron Yeager did the rumbling to end the cycle of relatives passing down Titans. This is very obviously true. This is very obviously the case. He was sickened at the thought of Historia passing her uh tighten down the bloodline he was absolutely against it it's one of the reasons he did the fucking rumbling for his story specifically but you know we can also generalize this like in general he does not like the thought of that he uh one of the biggest themes in attack on titan is getting children out of the forest right that is made clear when instead of getting revenge on gabby um sasha's father is very much like Instead of getting revenge on Gabby, Sasha's father is like, no, like this is us adults fault. Like it's up to us to stop burdening the future generations. And, you know, Aaron wasn't there for that. So that's literally just for us, the audience to understand that it takes 
the adults or the people with, you know, like knowledge of the world to put an end to this shit. And so that was Aaron's answer. That is how he decided to do that, to get children out of the forest, to not burden future generations. He's going to kill everyone who's racist towards his people. So the next reason that the story introduced in the final fucking chapter in the last episode is that Aaron did the rumbling to make his friends superheroes, but we already established how so many of his friends have died. Flock died, who he did consider a friend, okay? Levi had the opportunity to die. He put him in harm's way to die. Hanji fucking died. Um, Connie almost fucking died. Uh, even Mikasa almost fucking died. Like, come on now. Not only that, but he admits that he had no idea that they would survive. He did not think that they would survive. He didn't know. He didn't know. And how could he know or be sure that they would survive when they're going up against a god in a million shifters, right? It's, there's no shot they're surviving that. So there is no way on earth that he could have done it to make his friends superheroes not only that but he contradicts himself in the last chapter like eight times he says he did it to make them super superheroes he said he did it to see a barren land he said he did it he tried to go 100 percent. he was literally trying to go 100 percent, and they literally stopped him so how how exactly who are they superheroes for because they wouldn't be superheroes for paradise paradise would think that they're traitors which we see in the last fucking chapter how historia has to protect them and keep their family safe and shit so no uh he did not do the rumbling to make his friends superheroes that is false now did he do the rumbling because he was unstable absolutely not he was not crazy his mind was not all messed up future past and present was not existing all at once (laughs) i mean i mean it was in a sense that he got memories of the future and he was like clocking specific things to see if it would happen exactly as his memory said it would but that's as confused in heavy quotes as he was he was not struggling to keep track of where he was at uh any given time in the present we we, it just wasn't shown it wasn't shown and it's not enough to make that the twist so it, it just doesn't work from any angle not only that but you can't pretend to be confused with the way that the powers work if you're sending grisha memories and stuff and manipulating him so he can give you the titans that you need to carry this act out it doesn't work like that it does not make any sense if you're confused about the past the present and the future you would not have any way of organizing these memories in a way where you can manipulate someone else how is he manipulating zeke grisha and all of these other fucking people right If he doesn't know what's going on in his own mind, he doesn't get the powers, he doesn't understand, blah, 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 blah. Absolute ass pull, garbage bullshit. So as you can see, what we have left is that Aaron did the rumbling to eliminate the threats, to protect Historia, to protect the people of Paradis, to bury the history of hatred, the cycle of hatred, whatever you want to call it, and to end the cycle of relatives passing down titans. From what it looks like, he basically did the rumbling to give his people autonomy and actual freedom. So anything else is just false. And (laughs) what makes the ending bad is that they take these things away from Aaron and they turn it into, oh, I did it because of this. Oh, I did it because of that. Oh, I don't know why I did it. Right. Like at some point he said he literally says he doesn't know why he did the rumbling. It makes no sense. Um, So the rest of these are ass pulls. He did not do it for his friends to live long, happy lives. That's not even possible, especially the happiness uh, component. The rest of this shit is literally, he didn't do it to make a barren fucking wasteland of just ice fields and water crystals and whatnot. Like he did not do it because of those reasons. Those are just ass pull reasons that Isayama added to make the fact that Aaron lost make sense. This is the biggest evidence that Aaron was never supposed to lose, like, at the end of the series. He was supposed to complete the rumbling. And it's very, very evident. The narrative was written in a way so, like, such that this person whose response to injustice is uh, retaliation and self-preservation and 
for the people and things that he cares about, right? Like he's selfish, he's selfishly selfless, right? He will do whatever it takes for his people and the people he cares about. And that is what we were led to believe. And that is what we've seen up until this point. And he will do whatever it takes for his own freedom and his own goals. Like we've seen that. That is a character we've seen. And he is not afraid to make sacrifices, right? Like when Sasha had to be sacrificed, it was just that. You can't save everybody. Uh, he couldn't save, he, he couldn't fucking save Mina, Thomas, right? Like <laughs> these are people that he, he values life also. So that just shows that like the rumbling was hard on him. It really, really was. But his goals came before that. He deserves to be free. His mom spoke life to him posthumously. He deserve. it's his birthright to be free. And that is why he did the rumbling. Autonomy is his birthright and the people of Paradis. That's why he did the rumbling. And for the ending to try so hard to steer away from that, to steer towards this, oh no, he just did it so this handful of people could live long, happy lives and fuck his parents and fuck everybody else who died, right? Like, oh no, he just did this for a temporary solution just for this handful of people. No, I'm so sorry. That's not the character we've seen up until now. <laughs> like, we, 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 it's just not the character we've seen to this point. Oh no, he just did it because he was unstable. That's not what we've seen. That's not what we've seen. You can't have all these things happening off screen and expect like the people who actually care about your story to just be with it. That's not how it works. We, we watched this character develop into who he developed into. And if at any point that was a farce or whatever, we should have seen that. We should have seen like, oh, okay, this isn't who he actually is. Oh, okay, like he is like fucked up in the head. Oh yeah, he is struggling with these memories. Well, I'm sorry, we, di we just did not see that. By struggling with these memories, I mean like, you know, like he really was like um, confused at where the past ends and the future begins and the present stops and all that shit. We didn't see that. He knew exactly where he fucking was in the timeline. So much so that he was checking to oh what what were Sasha's last words right to check if it was the same in his fucking memories or visions that is what makes the ending so bad because instead of Aaron like completing his character arc he just becomes like a a, a fucking plot device for all the other characters to complete their um arcs like Mikasa specifically <laughs> Like, I am so sorry. It's like such a big 180 from who we watched. And I literally could not complain at all if Aaron's final conversation did not exist. That 139 conversation, had that not existed, we everybody would be on the same page about Aaron. Yeah, he did the rumbling so, you know, he could protect his people and he failed. He ended up losing. That's just what happened. You know, the series would have been so much better if Armin, who's supposed to be this brainiac, figured out a way to stop Aaron. If he figured out, if he outsmarted him and won fair and square somehow, because Aaron's a fucking god, right? That would have fixed the ending. We never needed Aaron's POV past this point because it just retconned everything. We needed a POV that didn't retcon everything or we just didn't need it at all for this ending to land. But Isayama wanted so bad. He had to explain how a literal god got defeated by a couple of folks. He had to explain that. And so that's why he gave Aaron's inner, like, that's why he gave him this, this final conversation with Armin. Like, yeah, I gave up on purpose. Oh, but no, I was actually trying to do a hundred. Oh, but no, I was trying to make you guys superheroes. Like, stop. It doesn't make sense. And it's not good. And if you think it is, you're coping. You can say you like it. It's fine if you like it. No one cares if you like it. But to say that it's good and that it's without major, major flaws, you're out of your mind. I'm sorry. The animation is beautiful. It looks so good. It's great. I'm probably going to theaters to watch it. But I can do all of that and admit that it's shite. And just in case I didn't make it clear enough, let me also just add while I'm editing 
that had we not received this final conversation between Armin and Aaron at the end of the series, everybody, people who hate the ending, people who like the ending, would be able to at least agree that Aaron did the rumbling for the reasons that were left on our board. If chapter 139 didn't exist, you'd be able to easily go back through the um, story. You'd be able to easily find evidence that he did the rumbling to eliminate the threat, um, to protect Historia, to protect the people of Paradis, to bear the history of hatred, to end the cycle of people eating their relatives. You'd be able to find that stuff in the story without chapter 139. And that's what makes me so confident that those were his actual motives and not just ass pulls because take 139 out of the story take the final episode out of the story and those things that I just stated they don't change about his motivation and we all could agree on those across the board but him being unstable him trying to make his friends super duper heroes those things are slap like dab slap at the end of the series there's nothing you could look through to make it like to make a case for that besides him telling you willy-nilly at the end that oh I did it for the for these reasons there's nothing in the rest of the story to substantiate the superheroes in fact there's things to counter that anyways the end bye